Hi, my name's Neil Davis and I'm the founder of Digital Cloud Training. This video is an excerpt from our upcoming course for the AWS Certified Solutions Architects Associate Certification that is made up almost entirely of hands-on labs. Over 20 hours of practical exercises to give you the knowledge and experience to pass your exam. I hope you enjoy the video and for more information about our courses, check out our social media. Hi guys, so the last lab for Aurora is on Global Database. Now, you may remember from the overview section that with Global Database, the key benefit is that you get very low latency replication across regions. So it's similar to MySQL cross-region read replicas in that your secondary regions can serve read traffic only, but the key benefit is that you're able to do so with much lower latency. So if your applications are reading traffic data from your database in your other regions and they need to make sure that they get the latest data they can't even handle a you know a few seconds of delay then you're going to need to use global database the other key benefit is that it doesn't put much of a performance impact on your master database so it's not using the sql features within the actual database instance itself some of that processing is being offloaded and it's actually putting a minimal impact on your database. So that's really good. And what we're gonna do now is actually create a configuration in AWS. So let's head over to the console. So we're here in the console and I'm just gonna to go to databases. I've still got my databases deleting from the previous lab and we're gonna choose create database. We're gonna choose Aurora and we're gonna come down and choose this option here where it says Aurora Global Database feature is now available. Now this is another one that's quite new, so may not be on the exam, but it's gonna be a quick lab anyway, so let's get into it. And remember, you will pay for the resources you create on Aurora, there's no free tier. So we're going to leave MySQL compatibility enabled. We're gonna leave Aurora MySQL 5.6 and this is where we could choose regional and if we choose regional we get the option to add read replicas and to choose serverless or we can go to global and we don't get those options for aurora replicas or serverless so what we do get are these two options where we just choose a profile so we'll choose a dev test template and that's going to reduce the resources that are created i'm just going to call this global db and I'm gonna copy that and paste it in as my, try that again, copy that and paste it in, paste it as the password, paste it to confirm. I'll leave encryption enabled. I'm gonna choose the smallest instance I can, but the options are different to with standard Aurora and you can't go to the smaller instances that I use there. You can choose to enable multi-AZ, and in this case, it creates an Aurora replica reader node in a different AZ. So we know what this is. This is for scaling read traffic. I'm gonna leave the default VPC enabled, and I'm just gonna choose create database. So that'll take a little while to create, and we'll just pause the recording for a few minutes while that takes place. That took 15 minutes or so, and now we have our global database in an available state. So you can see that the role is global for the database configuration. And then we've got our cluster here with the primary instance being in AP Southeast 2 and it's a writer. So what we wanna do now is create a global database in another region. And the way we do that is we highlight at the top here, we go to actions and add region and it will tell us that we're adding a secondary region to the global database. Secondary regions can serve low latency reads. In the unlikely event your database becomes degraded or isolated in the primary region, you can promote your secondary region. So we can then just go in and select the region we want to go with. I'm just gonna choose US East North Virginia. And again, we get some options here and I'm just gonna put it down to the smallest instance type available. And we also get an option to create a Aurora replica in the availability zone in the other region. I'm just gonna leave these as defaults and just come down here and click add region. 
Now in the console, we have the role secondary here, and we can see this secondary cluster. So we have our global database defined here, then we have our primary in AP Southeast 2, and then we have our secondary in US East 1. And in our primary, we have a writer, and in our secondary, we have a reader. reader. That'll take a few minutes to provision, and once that's complete, we'll have a look at how we can promote our secondary to become its own primary instance and a writable database. Our secondary global database is now available, and if we go and try and configure it, what's gonna happen is it's gonna just open the console in US East North Virginia, because obviously RDS is regional. And we can then actually go in and see the endpoint names, and we can go in and have a look at our cluster. So what we've done is we've now created our secondary region, and we have this read-only database here. And as you know, it's created a cluster, so it's got multiple copies of our database data there, and we've got asynchronous replication going on. But what happens if our primary region fails and we want to enable our secondary region, or perhaps we're using this as a way to migrate our database from one region to another? And if so, what we need to do is break the replication and then promote this read-only database to become a writable database. So let's head back to the console and see how that's done. We head to our cluster and we choose actions and remove from global. And you see the option here is remove and promote, so it does it all for you. Removing and promoting global DB cluster one in US East one will stop the replication from global DB cluster one in AP Southeast two and convert it into a standalone cluster. So let's press remote, remove and promote, and we'll get this done. And we've now got a little banner at the top here and it's telling us that it's removing and promoting the secondary global DB cluster one from the global database. It's been a few minutes, so it still says it's promoting, but we can see that the database has been created. So it's created a separate copy of the database. So let's go back here and we can now see that this has changed from a global to a regional role and it's a writer. So this has now become its own database. You can now write to this database and you could now go and create a cross region replica or even create a global database and create a secondary global database out of this one in a different region. So that's all great and that's the end of this lab. All we need to do now is just go in and delete our databases. So let's go disable the final creation of the final snapshot. And we just need to go in and type delete me. And we'll then need to go and do the same thing for our databases in the Sydney region here. And then once those have deleted, you'll then be able to go in and actually delete your clusters. That won't be available until you've got these deleted. So make sure you do because you will pay money for these Aurora databases. And clean up all your resources. And that's it for this lab, guys. See you in the next lab.